All right, so we're going to start off this video working on this quarter panel. Um, a lot of people think, you know, it's easier to replace these quarter panels, and I'm going to tell you right now, these quarter panels right here are really difficult to replace. Um, for one thing, you've got a seam right here, okay? You have most of the new ones don't come with this little the door the hood rubber uh, they this is all one piece all the way down all the way to the front most of them are generic they fit multiple model years they're made by a crappy manufacturer um, that they don't fit very good you know most of the time it is not the right thing to do to replace the quarter it's always easier in my opinion to, re to re repair them they, I think they do make a repair section that you can weld in um, and I would if I were going to do that I would definitely stay away from trying to tuck it in under here because basically how they go on is this piece here of uh, the actual dash is metal that's rolled over on here and this this quarter is underneath it so you'd have to peel up all this metal here and you peel that up and put the new one underneath this is going to be rag raggedy looking. You're not going to have a good finished looking piece of metal. So spending the time on these to get them straightened. I mean, I'm telling you this because most of the guys have, most of the problem with these are not just rust. This one's got a lot of rust. We're going to fix this. It's going to be really easy to do. Um, most of them are dented in really bad. So straightening that quarter and metal finishing it. And then if you... Some guys go, well, yeah, I want the inside to look good. Well, you put your filler on the inside too and finish the inside if you want the inside to look good. It's always easier to replace them. I'm just going to go over a couple little things on that if you've got one like that. So a lot of times these are stripped out and you can actually buy these little things here, these nut certs at Wolfsburg West. And there's a couple different ways to replace them. Most of the time what I do is um, I will actually put them on the outside and then put them into the hole. When I'm doing, this is going to be a more of a high-end restoration. So on this one I would try and weld them from the, from the inside. I'll put it on the inside and actually weld it in place. Drill some holes around it around it you know, I'm in the frame drill some holes around it and actually weld through them it's a little hard to do if you're new at welding uh, doing plug welding is probably the hardest thing especially when the inside piece that you're trying to weld to is thicker than the sheet metal on the outside you'll burn some holes in it trying to figure it out so that's one of the reasons I always suggest putting it in from this side and uh, tapping it low so that it's flush and it'll work fine you won't hardly even notice that it's there especially if it's the one down on the bottom that one's pretty much free game and they're most of the time that's the issue one that you're going to have right here so if you've got one of these fenders and this one's the one that you know maybe the bolt's stuck in it or it's all stripped out and it's spinning in the hole um, this is the one you're going to just put in from the outside beat it down low you cannot see it from anywhere so somebody had a question said on the other video I made that said hey um, you know if I'm selling the car someday you know I want the inner you know, you know I go to sell it if they see the repair you know just make sure they don't see it finish it on the inside of the metal Finish it on this side and finish it on this side. Do your block work, do all everything by hand in here because you can't really get a sander in there. Just finish it, you know, fill it, finish it, make it all done on both sides so that you can't see. When I'm done with this car, I'm going to do this one this that way too. So all the inside of this is going to get finished, even though I'm just doing some repairs to it. The problem with this one is, is there's your rust holes along here. And it's actually not a difficult repair so stick around in this video we're going to talk about how to do we're going to do we're actually going to do those repairs 
But if you had one that was smashed in right here, it is so common. Almost every one of these is like that. Get a crowbar, get behind there, push it back out and straighten it. Don't try and replace it. You're gonna, if you do try and replace it, what you wanna do is lay, cut out where the holes are, lay the one panel over the other one and cut through two layers and butt weld it along here. Do not try and take it off at the seam. You'll, if you do that, you will just, I've seen so many cars in the wrecking yard just because of that. They, they got rid of them because it looks so bad that they just gave up on it. So if you're gonna do it, the best way you were gonna have to replace the metal is to lay one piece over the other. Um, if your bolt holes are good, cut it at the seam and weld it right at that seam. Um, and then put the other one, lay the other one over the other and cut it right here about. Give yourself some room to grind, you know. You don't want to grind right in that corner. You can't really grind very good in there. So give yourself some room, cut it right back out here, but weld it in right there. Uh, still going to be a really typical, difficult repair. I'm going to say nine times out of 10 or more, more like 99 times out of 100, repairing that quarter is going to be much easier. So anyway, sorry, I didn't really want to go too much on that. But I know that some of you guys are probably having this issue because it is really common to have bad quarters on your bug. If I didn't say it before, they have the two different styles of these. They have them at Wolfsburg West. There's this style and there's the little square insert ones. They have both of them at Wolfsburg West. They're not expensive. You can buy a package of them. I don't know. Not too bad. You also can look on Amazon. I think this is called, I looked in Weld, uh, weld In Net Cert. I think that's what they're called. I'm not sure. Look up weld in net certs and you'll start to find stuff and there'll be a specific word you can search for and you can find them on, on Amazon, eBay, a lot of places they sell these. So they're not expensive. First thing we got to do is clean the metal around these patches where we're going to make patches because there's actually Ospo on here. You can see it's all black. So I'm going to clean off the metal. Because, you know, if you're watching the whole video series, it's going to be repetitive. But some of you guys are just picking this up now. Or maybe you're looking for this specific repair. Um, so, I'm going to clean up the metal around these. I think I'll do that off camera real quick. And I'll bring you right back in. I'm just going to clean up around them with a grinder. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sheet metal. And I'm going to make sections, little patch sections. It doesn't matter how they're shaped or anything like that. We're going to make set patch sections that go over those holes where this is. So I'm gonna make a patch that size. I'll show you in a second. So we've got here a metal patch that I made for this one. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut the corner off of it a little bit. I mean, just, cause I don't wanna get into that bolt right there. I wanna stay away from that if I can. So, Say most of the damage. I'm trying to figure out where I want to do this because there's a big pit right here, so I want to fix that. Let me just lop the corner off of this and just look at it. I like stuff to be pretty angular so that I can make it easy to fix, easy to make. So I'm just going to take this patch right here, just as it is. And I'm going to weld it, I'm just going to put a spot weld here and here just to hold it in place. The whole theory of what I'm going to do is I'm going to spot weld this on there. I'm going to shape it, just kind of beat it on it and make it so it's down flat. I'm going to spot weld it in place, then I'm going to cut through both layers and then butt weld this in and I'll replace this piece of metal with this one. It's really a simple process. It's like, it's really pretty easy to do. I think most people can do it. So I've just made my patch. It doesn't even, it's not even formed to the same thing. So anyway, I'll go ahead and start with this one and I'm gonna do all these ones all exactly the same way. In fact, I'm gonna do the same thing up here with these. 
I'm going to remove these turn signal holes or these uh, not turn signal antenna holes. So I'm going to straighten this metal out pretty well first with a hammer and dolly, and then I'm just going to put square pieces over it, cut them into butting, and then we'll go from there. I call it a cut into butt. That's whatever you want to call it. That's fine. That's what I call it. Cut into butt. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and lay one on there and weld it, and we'll take a look at it in a second. All right, so patched in there. So I've just got that one held on. Got hooked on that stupid line right there. Let me get a hammer real quick. Hopefully I've got it on there good enough. I barely tacked it on, so don't be surprised if it falls off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to form it to the general shape. It doesn't need to be perfect. Grind that thing off a little bit. Right here. So I'm just going to throw a couple more welds. Tacks on down here to hold it in place. While I'm working on it. In fact, I may not even have to do that, but I could just cut it here and here and then just push it down and start welding it in. But it's better if it's a little tight to the surface because then it doesn't, you don't get a big gap. So I'll just weld that on real quick. I'll bring you right back in. All right, so I went with one more tack and uh, Got that in place. So now we're ready to start cutting this into a butt. So what I'm going to do, a couple different ways you can do it. You can use a cutoff wheel, you can use a saw, a little air saw or whatever. I don't mind the cutoff wheel because my welder will fill in that gap no problem with that little Harbor Freight welder. You know, some of you guys with a 220 welder, you might want to use a little saw because you're going to have to do really tight little tacks. Uh, this Harbor Freight titanium welder doesn't warp the metal quite as bad as some of the other 221s. It still does warp it on certain surfaces. On this corner, I'm pretty sure I could butt weld this whole thing in. You know, make a, I'll tack it in first, and I could probably just butt weld almost the whole thing in one inch at a time. Probably not warp it. So.
All right, guys, I'm gonna show you something real quick. I made this piece here. I just kind of made it off camera. And I got the car jacked up nice and high so I can work on it. Um, and, and it's not perfect. Uh, and down here in the corner, it doesn't really matter if it is or not. If I get some ugly welds on the other side, it's not gonna matter. Um, if you notice inside there, that's red primer. A special primer that stops rust it's this stuff right here this actually really works I've had this stuff um, I use this stuff sometimes because it's a it's one step you can put it over rust I cleaned all everything out of there really good I took brake cleaner and cleaned everything out got all the oil out of there and everything and coated it with this so and then when I'm done I'll probably take one of those long hose things and shoot it down in there in those crevices and stuff like that to make sure the, the welds on the other side got primer on them. You notice I don't have the lid on here. What you can do is you can actually, to save yourself a couple bucks, you can use the uh, brake cleaner lid on here and then just put the little hose on it, put a long one on there, shove it in some places. <clears throat> and it kind of does similar to what those, they have those 360 degree spray nozzles. And they're kind of expensive. I'm going to get some of those, but um, this is just another way to get paint in the crevices and stuff. And it works all right. You know, you get it. You're not going to get it 100%, but way better than if you didn't do it. So anyway, down in there, I got some primer, and both sides are like this, and it's like a little cavity in here. Even this little part is part of it. So dirt gets down in here, and that's why that rusted through. It just gets wet down there. And the dirt gets wet. And it's constantly wet. And there's really no protection on it. So, anyway, keep the dirt out of there. Use a long vacuum thing. Clean it all out of there. I'm going to do that too. And blow it with air. A few things like that to make sure it stays maintained. Anyway, I'll get my magnet. Put this in place. Weld it up. Move on to the next panel. There was a lot of time put in this. This is crazy. I think I've got... I'll have three days in this panel just in doing this and I still have to take the door off there's a dent right here so anyway there's a lot of you know not three full days just a couple hours here a couple hours there I didn't really spend all day working on it anyway I'll talk to you guys a little later I was just gonna say somebody said seemed to think that when I weld I don't burn holes um, I need to paint the back side of this real quick. Let's do that. I actually burn holes a lot, and I don't want to mislead anyone on that. You, you're going to burn some holes if you're getting penetration. Um, if you're really trying to get good penetration on your welds. But the thing that I, I, I will tell you is if you really watch me in high speed, you'll watch my finger. It looks like I'm going like this. I had the videos up to like 12 times. Uh, usually so I'm going like this so I'm going to zzz, zzz, zzz. I'm just constantly stopping letting the weld cool for a second and then re triggering so if you're trying to do this and you're thinking man I just do a continuous weld all the way across and no I'm not I'm doing stitches all the time just constantly hitting the button letting off letting it cool for a second and then hitting the button again and if you watch in high speed you'll see my finger going like this just because I'm just constantly the whole way through I'm just on the trigger off the trigger to and what that does is that letting it cool just for a second lets the weld cool enough to where you're not getting it hotter and hotter and hotter and then burning through and then every once in a while I'll get a good area where I've got two pieces of 19 gauge so like my patches are done in 20 so um because they don't make 19 all right that's one millimeter thick where i'm using original metal if i'm using a piece of original panel and i'm patching with that then uh, a lot of times i'll be able to run a longer bead so i'll run like i'll be watching for it to melt if i see it start to melt through i'll let off the trigger let it cool for a second and come back into it with another thing so it's all it's you when you're doing butt welding you're constantly on and off the trigger to try and let it cool enough to be to be able to continue your welding. 
you know, the right way, quote unquote, right way to do it is to stitch once, cool the weld, go to another area, and then stitch again. The reason I don't normally do that is partly because of this welder. Um, this welder, plus, I don't really have the patience for it, okay? But with my other welder, I've done it. And what I had to do with that one, and with that one, it was no big thing because as soon as I left the trigger, the gas stops. On this one, I left the trigger and the gas keeps going for like five seconds or so. So I waste a ton of gas doing it, trying to stitch just like one little tiny spot weld and do another one. So I would weld, the right way to do it would be like weld here, weld here, weld here, weld here, cool it, go in a circle, you know, here, 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 here. And just just work your way around you know um, but I, again I don't do that because the welder continues to blow gas out and the thing that's weird is that blowing that gas out of there actually cools it a little bit so I'm able to go further without having to cool it and stop and not warp as much it's basically the Harbor Freight titanium welder it's just the way it works um, when I'm using my 221 it gets hotter too, the 220 welder does, the titanium. This is the 140. They also have the two, whatever it is, the, the 220 welder. But, and if you look here, this is the size extension cord I got. So yeah, I'm, I'm not messing around with the little tiny cord. If you're using a 110 welder, you should have a really thick cord for an extension cord just a couple things to know don't use a little tiny thing if you got a little tiny cord this big you're probably gonna burn up the machine won't take you know it'll probably last a year or so but you'll burn it up quicker all right just a couple of tips there we'll move on sorry if this went on too long but Right, I ran out of big wire, so I had to use my 030. I'll show you guys what the settings are for that if you have a Harbor Freight welder. I have plenty player now with it. I still haven't dialed it in. Oh, it's about right there. You got to really drop the heat. It's just a different game with the other wire. So I had to drop the heat almost all the way down. Let's see what's all the way down. 13.0, 13.2. And then speed up the wire. You'd think it would start pushing wire, but it doesn't. It's just you gotta go, to go really slow with it. So anyway, that's where I was at. So I don't know about welding up gaps. We'll have to just see how it goes. Um, but with the other wire, I've been able to do gaps pretty easy. You know, I can do smaller spots with it. I should be able to do the same thing, but with my other welder that I have, the other wire I, I have that, I can do whatever I can do all those things, but my other welder um, it doesn't make any difference if I use 2.3 or I use 3.0, 3.5 or 
I just turn the wire speed down and it works about the same. This one definitely works way different. So what the plan is, let's look at what I'm going to do here in the next one. This is what I was thinking on this one. I'll let you guys look at it and see what you think. But this is rotten right over here. So I've got to cut it somewhere up in here. It's pretty solid there, just a little red. And then over here, this side I can probably, if I keep myself out of that bend, it'll probably be easier. So I'll probably go like this. I should go all the way over here. Go up to there and then just go straight. And then, so if I lay a piece in and I'm a flat here, it'll be better if I weld right here along that. If I tried to weld going up this little hill, it might be okay if I had like a little ear where I could just bend that ear up. But if I tried to cut straight up here, it would be a compound bend. So it would go this way, this way, and that way. And doing that, the metal's not going to want to do that. Okay, I'd have to cut slits in it and then weld them up, all kinds of stuff. So I want to refrain from doing that because I don't need to. Over here, I can do like this, come down, and I'm going to get into it a little bit right there because I got to get around. That's rotten, and uh, this isn't, even though it looks red. So it's going to be kind of like that. I'm thinking the metal will, it's going to, it's going to fight me right here. So, so I might have to cut some slits in it. I'll get you guys up a little closer. You can see, because it's going this way right here. It just kind of really goes this way, and then it goes up, and then it bends back a little bit on each side. Okay, but up here it goes out, and it goes up and then it goes this way so I've got three different compounds it's not going to want to bend that way very easily so I'm hoping if I cut this out I can get a piece that's bigger lay it in here and then hmm, I could always lay it up here bend this edge right fold it up kind of form it into place and have this all cut out and then go on the inside underneath the car underneath inside here in the hole and trace it and then I'll have a pretty much have a shape and then cut it just a little bit larger than the trace so I always leave this line there when I do something like that I'll leave when on the inside the other piece I'll leave the line there and I'll cut outside of it just barely and then bring it in slowly that sort of thing that's what I'm thinking and then lay it on top and I can cut through two and butt it if it's like that, just then I'll just slide off that little sliver. We shall see. It's not going to be that hard. It looks bad. It looks hard. It's not. So, and then this hole, if you look here, lines up, almost lines up perfectly with this hole here. Because the cable goes through here and comes out here and then goes down in that little hole. If I got all that in the video. You guys were in frame through here out here and into there so all I got to do is say move it to the left just a little bit it'll be in the right place let's kind of guesstimate that nobody will know except for you guys so anyway we'll get this one cut out take a look at it bring you back in
All right, while I was filling some of this, so I just stopped for a while because I was getting kind of frustrated. Um, and here's what I was doing off camera, and that's because I'm using 030 wire, and you can see how hot it was getting. The and I have the butter turned all the way down, and the, had to crank up the wire speed a bit and mound it. You know, it just doesn't. So if you're using one of these hard freight welders and you're using 030, you might want to stick to 023 or it's I guess it's 025 or 024 or 0235 or whatever they're all the same it just depends on who makes it it's the smaller wire there's small wire and big wire for wire feed if you're using a gas bottle it just like every other time I pull the trigger it burns a hole you know it's not because it's rusty or anything it's really not rusty it's just as rusty as anything else but with that um, 023 wire or 030 wire, it's. I ordered some other stuff, so we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll do a little more. I don't know. Maybe I'll finish this up, but it's just. I don't know. It's. It's warping it too, so. More than the other does. So if you're wondering. If you're using that wire and you're wondering why you're getting warpage, there you go. I have it at 13. I got this thing. Let's see the settings. So I turned it all the way down to 13. I got the wire up to 125. I mean that's a that's just like really fast wire speed for 030. So um, it just doesn't work that well with that. It works like a 220 welder. That's what it that's what it feels like. You know my on my 220 welder whether I used 023 or I used the other it always was like this and then that's why I didn't butt weld that much stuff because I was like this just this is not fun. It just takes a long time to do because you're sitting there burning through and then you got to go back and grind it and it's getting hot and it's warping so it's much easier if you get the 023 with that welder. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys a bit later. Alright, so real quick, this welder is like a co totally different machine when it's on 030 and 023. So I put the 023 back in it I bought some, went and bought some more temporarily um, real quick you guys um, I found out with my 220 welder I can buy wire anywhere it doesn't care pretty much welds the same and when I run an 023 on it I just turn the wire speed up and it welds pretty much the same as um, with 030 I mean other than you just the wire is different you know it but on this welder it's like a totally different machine when you're running 030 on it. When you run 030, if you're going to weld thick stuff with this titanium Arbor Freight, you really need to use the, uh, the 030. And then if you use the uh, sheet metal, you really have to use 023. It, it just doesn't weld on the other end. I found a difference. So like I got my wire here. This is the one I got. Um, and at the just at the there's different wire companies but the Harbor Freight wire compared to this wire is like totally different too on this machine this machines pickier it doesn't like the Harbor Freight wire as much so a couple little key things there if you guys have one of these if you're buying the wire at Harbor Freight you can try I, I just try it just try the other buying wire somewhere else like this is another generic brand in it for some reason, I don't know it. It welds a lot better with it. It, you find it burning up the, like when you're when you're welding, you'll watch the, the, it'll kind of run up it more. It does that a little bit sometimes, on O3 on O23, on O30 it doesn't do it at all. Like I said, it sounds different. It, it the temperatures are different. Like I have to run more heat with this wire to make it do the same thing as that wire does at a lower heat it just which is the opposite of what you think but that's how it works anyway let's do some more welding if I just kept going with the other it would have taken me forever just to do this because I had to do one spot cool it cool it cool it cool it and then do another spot and it was burning through that's how much difference it is now I can almost run a bead I could run a bead for a quarter inch at a time and cool it with a with by just letting off the trigger and just letting it set for a second and then starting back again
All right, she's looking pretty good. Just need some filler on there, and I need to grind it from underneath. So I got to pull out the steering column. This stuff is little, taking a little longer than I expected. I, this panel is what really slowed me down. There's those holes down there that I forgot about until I got on it, and then still need to take the door off, fix that hinge. I'm gonna have quite a bit of time in the front of this car, uh, realizing I wanted to get it primed uh, before I work on that Gia, but uh, it's, it's there's a bit more work here to do. So anyway, I'm just gonna have to end this one here and talk to you guys in the next one. Figure it'll give, uh, it'll take me too many more days. It's gonna take me like a couple more days to finish this side, fill that, clean up all that. I mean, I got, it's gonna take me a little while. And I gotta fix up here, the top of this, take the mirror out so I can prime all that. Um, I need to get all that done before I can really start on that gear or paint it. Cause I gotta pull it in here and do it sand it and everything get it all prepped one day then pull it in the booth and spray it all right i'll talk to you next one